Hi everybody, Ryan Durda. I wanna have a conversation today and it'll be in the context of a conversation I had yesterday afternoon with a client. And to be perfectly honest with you, I found it a little alarming. Client I've had for a while says to me, Ryan, here's what I have in my portfolio. And I'm not gonna get into this client's specifics, but to generalize it, he has a sizable stock market portfolio and he has a sizable real estate portfolio, owns his home outright, and in his real estate portfolio, he owns some land, some commercial cash flowing real estate and some Airbnb type properties. And he said to me, I have a significant amount of deployable capital. I don't want to put all of my eggs in one basket. If you were me, what would you do? One of the first questions I had was, well, in your total portfolio exposure, how much gold and silver do you own? And the question was somewhat rhetorical because I already knew how much gold and silver he owned, but I wanted to highlight to him some of the events taking place in the world today and in essence allow him the opportunity to make his own decision as to how he should potentially allocate those funds. So what I'm going to simply do in this video is share with you some recent headlines and based on those headlines I think the audience is smart enough to be able to determine on their own where allocations of those funds should potentially go. So here we go. Demand for commercial real estate state loans are down below 2,008 levels. Credit card delinquency rates at small regional banks are the highest on record. Here's a big one. China's U.S. Treasury holdings are at the lowest level in 14 years. Now I'm going to take a moment and talk on that point because it's not just China. It's the global central banks are dumping U.S. Treasuries, including our own Federal Reserve Bank. Last one I'm gonna read. Since the Fed started raising interest rates in March of 2022, a record $862 billion in bank deposits have been withdrawn. Previous record, 70 billion in the 2008 financial crisis. What does all that mean? It means one thing very clear to me, and it's called loss of confidence in the U.S. dollar and people's ability to spend is reaching its limits. So to further answer his question, I said, okay, how do you feel these events are going to impact the stock market? And he says, well, I, I think it's going to cause the stock market to go down. I go, okay, how much do you believe the stock market co could go down? And he said, well, just in, during COVID alone, I took a 50% haircut. Okay, so 50% percents on the table. I go, if commercial real estate loans are at below 2008 levels, do you feel that commercial real estate has significant risk right now? He goes, well, absolutely. So if you were to be a bond investor and interest rates are continuing to go up, that means the value of the bonds are going down. And now let's add to that fact, treasuries are being dumped around the world at record levels. Today marks China's 10 months of record gold buying, 14 year low in treasury holdings. That tells me, well, I, I don't know that I wanna be in the bond market right now. So I brought the question back to my client. Out of your portfolio holdings, what do you feel you need to own more of? He immediately responded with, I think I should own more gold. And that's the point that I wanna make in this video. We've talked a lot about silver in the past, but let's also not rule out owning gold in your portfolio. Here's what stands out to me the most. The global central banks, that includes our own Federal Reserve, has been unwinding treasury holdings for close to a year at a record rate. And during the same duration of time, buying record amounts of gold. Why aren't you? If you like my content, please like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video.